Hello everyone! Oh my god, I haven't filmed a video in so long and every time I film there's always hair in my face, hair in my mouth, but whatever. I'm going to try my best to not touch my hair because when was the last time I filmed a video? Let me go check because I'm going to check myself. Like, I know I haven't done a video since 2018 and that is just unacceptable. And I am going to put in a new video this year. And, I mean, hold on. It's 2021. Honestly, this video might come out 2022 just because I... Whoa, it says I haven't filmed a video for three years. Okay, I was watching my old videos <laughs> a little bit earlier and I was just cringing at my younger self. But at the same time, I'm a little bit proud of myself putting myself out there because the body image issues I had back then, oh my god. <sighs> Anyway, the last video that I uploaded onto this YouTube channel was on April 30th, 2018. It's been nearly three and a half years because April was in, what, four months? And that would have been four years since the last time I uploaded a video on this channel. And that's unacceptable. Okay, so this video... It's going to be about the books that I've read this year in 2021. So let me gather them. I have them all stacked up on my drawer. And there is one more book that I need to grab. So give me one moment. There's one book missing. Let me begin with the book that I just finished. And it's a book I've had for a while. And it's a book I've actually talked about before in... A previous video so you can be happy by Richard Carlson PhD he is also the author of don't sweat the small stuff and what my friend Christine hi Christine she sent me this quote or a video where this person mentioned that you should find 100 good books and just reread them over the course of your life if I had 100 books that I could only read, this book would definitely be on the list because it goes over the five principles of true happiness, the principle of thought, moods, separate realities, feelings, and the principle of the present moment. I really like this book because as I reread it, this is probably my third time reading it my whole life. Each time I'm in a different state of mind a different mentality and each time I've always taken something and this year I wanted to reread it just because I'm I want to say I'm going through a lot and <laughs> since it's been almost four like almost four years since I posted on this channel so much has happened to me my hair color has changed and I got into my first relationship ever and I also got into my first breakup. We actually broke up twice, but we are officially done. And it's just so much has happened and I've learned so much. This book really helped me get through my breakup. And as you can see, I love annotating. I love quotes. And I find that whenever I read something... There's always someone who writes my feelings and whatever experience I'm going through much better than I can. And the way they express it is just like, yes, that's exactly what the fuck I'm going through. So I have lots of stickers here, but I will just go through a few. Well, let's just do random because I don't know which ones were like the most amazing to me. I just, I mean, obviously I have a lot of favorites. Okay, I'm just going to choose this one because it's purple so it stands out okay it's actually there's two purple on one page okay on page 128 the first purple I put why is it that some people are able to shake off unfortunate events while others dwell on them and use them as excuses to inhibit and immobilize their lives that's a great question um, and then the second purple sticker, I'm going to read what I bookmarked. It's the whole paragraph. 
The passage of time has no relevance in helping us to get over something other than to encourage us to forget it. There is no preset amount of time that will allow us to forget anything. Once we understand the dynamics of thought, we can see that all memory is only memory, whether something happened eight years ago or eight minutes ago. If the passage of time was the determining factor, everyone would get over things within the same time period, but we know this doesn't happen. Wow. This book has really taught me to not take anything personally. And once you realize that everyone has their own individual thought system and everyone's living in their own reality and they experience their own truths, you come to realize that your truth is your truth and their truth is their truth. And you can both be true at the same time, even though you both feel different things. And then you just come to this realization like, oh my God, like your life is your life. My life is my life. So whatever you do in your life, that's your actions, your consequences, and my feelings shouldn't be hurt. That's that. Let me move on <laughs> to the next book. This book is so... The cover, don't judge a book by its cover, okay? I bought this a long time ago, probably because of the cover, because it's so attractive, I guess. It's very funny. It kind of like brings you in a little bit because the title is... is kiss that frog. So I read this when I went through um, my first breakup. It's about the same person and we just broke up twice. So reading this, I read this pretty quickly. It's only 138 pages and I guess I will go through what color should I do? I did purple already so let me do pink. Let's see the first pink one. It says... With the pencil, you open your hand and let it go. With a negative experience that still makes you unhappy, you open your heart and let it go. Remember, no one makes you feel anything. No one makes you mad. Nothing that hap that <laughs> sorry. Nothing that has happened to you has any control over you. Is that not so powerful? The past is in the past. It's not going to bother me. And I'm going to let it go. So, Kiss That Frog. Definitely recommend you to read this book. It also talks about, like, people who have anger issues. And the best thing you can do for yourself is just let them be. Don't try to change them. And move on with your life. Okay. Another great book. It's a cult classic. I'm sure you've read it yourself. I'm sure you've heard of it. But I've had this book for many years, and I think this is maybe the second time I've reread it. As you can see, I'm picking books that kind of like mirror what I'm going through. And I wanted to read, I wanted to reread this book specifically because there's an agreement in here that says don't take it personally. And it's really hard to not take things personally, especially, especially if you have really big emotions that are tied to an event or a person or something, and then you just feel so intensely about it. Ah! It's so cold. That's why I'm wearing like a scarf. I'm, I would put on a jacket, but it would look ridiculous. I reread this book, and I feel like not taking things personally, it's not something you just... It's not something that happens to you overnight. You definitely have to practice it. You definitely have to be really self-aware and you have to do a lot of self-reflecting. And you can't blame that person for whatever they did to you. And it's very easy to blame. I feel like I have acid reflux coming up. Like Maybe I'm too excited. I'm talking too fast, but... It's very easy to blame people. It's very easy to be like, you are this, you are that, you hurt me, yada, yada, yada. When you don't take it personally, you just realize like, it's so much more profound to just let things go and eliminate your ego out of the situation. Don't make yourself a victim. Just learn from it, grow from it, and let go of it. 
as you can see, there's like a theme <laughs> for all the books that I've read. Okay, let's do a nonfiction book. Let's do a fiction book. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's do a non self help book. Okay, let's do a fiction book. I do read them, okay? I do read not I do read fiction, but I do prefer nonfiction because I love being hit with the truth. I love hearing from other people's experiences. And at the more I read of people sharing their very vulnerable secrets, their embarrassing stories, moments they wish ne that never happened to them, I love reading the human side of people. If that makes sense. I'm sure it does. Because you're smart. You get what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> a fiction book that I read was this book. It's called Sleepless in Manhattan. And I bought this book a long time ago at Barnes and Nobles. And I never read it until this year. And one of the things I started doing this year was like, I'm going to read 10 minutes a day. And even if I only read one page, even if because sometimes I'm really tired, sometimes I'm really lazy. And what I've come to discover is that reading is a discipline. Like, it's a discipline. It's hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, I would have read all these books already. And I haven't. But I read this book. And I bought it a long time ago. <laughs> and I bought it a long time ago. And I finally read it. And I, I actually did read it years ago. And I was like trying to remember what it was about and as I finally finished the book I realized that what I read it when I read it years ago it doesn't line up against so it rereading is really great and this book I didn't know it when I bought it but it's a little intimate it has some smut in here which took me by surprise but it was a great surprise, nonetheless. <laughs> it's a love story, so of course I liked it. Next book. As I said earlier, there's a theme with this. I bought this on sale, of course, at Barnes & Noble's. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> oh my god. Huh. Anyway without talking too much about my personal life, I'm just gonna pick a random color. I already did purple and pink, so let's do orange. I'm just gonna pick the first orange, whatever sticky note it lands on. Okay, page 28. This is what we're really looking for when we talk about closure. Nothing is ever really closed. Not the kind of things we're dealing with here, but there can be a total shift in where we place our emotional energy from an unproductive focus on the past to a highly productive focus on the future. That's not closure. It's open sure. <laughs> Whether or not we will make this shift is what's at stake here. If we do, a life of satisfaction, meaning, and joy awaits us. And I agree. And one of the things that I've come to realize is that for myself, I don't need closure from people. I don't need their explanation as to why they did this or why they didn't do something, why they said something, why they didn't say anything to me because that's just the ego wanting attention, the ego wants praise, the ego wants something, the ego wants an answer, the ego, <laughs> did I say eagle or ego? The ego wants you to do something for it. And I really believe that wanting closure from someone is just low self-esteem. <laughs> And I say that coming from myself, coming from myself, because have I ever liked someone and I wanted closure from him? Of course, of course, I was 20 years old and I was in college and stupid. And now that I am 27, 
I've come to realize I don't need someone's explanation for whatever they did do or whatever they didn't do because I don't need to be stuck in the past. I don't need to know why you did X, Y, and Z. I don't care about your intentions. Even if you had good intentions, I don't care because me wanting to know about what you did in the past is me not letting go of the past. And if you want to let go of the past, you got to drop the need for closure because truly you don't need it. Once I realized that I didn't need closure, that was when that chapter of my life closed. Okay, let's talk about the next book. My friend got me this, Cindy. Cindy got me this book. She got it. Um, I'm going to be honest. She got this for me a while back and I just got to reading it and <laughs> Ali Wong is nothing but vulgar, honest. She's really funny and I like that she wrote this book for her two daughters. I didn't mark anything of it but would I reread this again? Yes because she's very open and honest in here and I always appreciate um, those stories that you think you're like whoa I would never share this about myself but she did so it's like I don't know. It's entertaining. Another book that was gifted to me by a friend, by Wesley, by Alex. She got me this book called Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And it's also an autobiography and I really like it. And she got it for me when I was going through my breakup. And I feel like she was trying to tell me something. But I shouldn't assume. But I think Alex wants me to be untamed. <laughs> I really love this book. It's all about just going out there, being yourself. Life is short. Go after whatever you want to do. You know, tell the person who you like that you like them because, you know, you're untamed. Okay, a fiction book. I've had this book for the longest time as well, and I have um, a couple of books from Long Leave. And at first I thought this was going to be like a poetry book because the other stuff that I have by her over here are poetry books. And then I'm reading it. I'm like, hold on, like it's a story and I like it. I do want to get the other books. I think it's like a trilogy. And um, yeah, this is like a young adult. This is about kids in high school. And <laughs> this is... Uh, I think I would have loved this book in high school too, but um, I mean, I liked it, but I feel like my younger self would have loved this. So I still like it. I It, it feeds that inner child that I have. Okay, this, <laughs> this video is so long and all over the place, but my great friend Christine, who I had mentioned earlier, she gifted me this book. It's called The Millionaire Next Door by... Thomas J. Stanley, PhD, William D. Dango, PhD. I like this because it provides a lot of statistics. Like I'm a very analytical and I love data. If I were to change my career trajectory, I have thought about being a business analyst, a data analyst. However, just looking at numbers over and over again, I it, it becomes less appealing to me. But I do like looking at numbers. I like to see my own numbers. I like to calculate my net worth once a month. I like to know where I am number-wise. Anyway, I do have one page stickied here. So let's see what it is. Okay. Question three. Do you have a clearly defined set of daily, weekly, monthly, annual, and lifetime goals? The source of this question came from a decamillionaire whom we interviewed a dozen years ago. He told us that he started a whole wholesale food business at the age of 19. He never finished formal high school but did eventually receive his high school equivalency diploma. We asked him to account for the fact that although he was a high school dropout, he had accumulated over 10 million dollars his response was as follows i have always been goal orientated i have a clearly defined set of daily goals weekly goals monthly goals annual goals and lifetime goals i even have goals to go to the bathroom i always tell our young executives that they must have goals yes i 
very much am a goal-orientated person. I have daily goals that I need to accomplish for work, weekly goals for work, and also weekly goals for myself, like how many times I go to the gym, how many times I floss, how many times I read, reflect. Those daily goals impact your weekly goals, which impact your monthly goals, which impact your yearly goals and your overall health and well-being. So it's all about consistency and what you do every day and your habits. It's what you become. Character is destiny. Heraclitus said that. And, you know, like making goals has been such a um, calming thing for me. It's it to me, anal analyzing my goals and writing down goals is a form of self-care for myself. And I just get so excited when it's like November because then I get to buy a calendar for the next year, which I already did. And I can get to buy a new planner and make all these annual goals. And it's just so, oh, it makes me feel productive. And feeling productive is just, I don't know. It makes me feel like, oh my God, I'm living. Anyway, that's the end of my video. It's, oh. It's honestly ridiculous. I am, by the way, I'm filming on my MacBook Air and every couple of seconds it darkens itself, but it's still recording. But um, those were all the books that I read this year. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me talk about the books that I'm currently reading right now. I'm rotating between two. So, uh, <sighs> I don't know if I sound a little bit sick. You let me know. I did catch COVID about two weeks ago and I am fully recovered. It's just my, I'm just feeling like it's just the remnants of it. You know, I'm probably like 98%. I'm not fully 100, but I'm going to be at 100 very soon. So after I finish, you can be happy. I started reading this book because I saw it at the thrift store for like $7. So I was like, of course, I'm going to pick it up. And it's called Creating Magic by Lee Cockerell, 10 Common Sense Leadership Strategies from a Life at Disney. And okay, do I see myself as a leader? No. Do I want to be a leader? No. But do I want to learn from a leader? Yes. So I picked it up thinking like, oh, it's going to be like profound and yada, yada, yada. It's going to be magical. And then I'm reading it and it's like so dry. Granted, I am only um, 23 pages in. But so far, I think it's his writing. It's um, uh, it's it's a little dry for me. But I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put this on pause because I started rewatching Parks and Rec, and I'm like, oh my god, Amy Poehler is so funny. And did you know I have had her book on my shelf for years? That's why there's a gap right here because I just took this book out because I've had this book for God knows how long. I don't know. Maybe I got it at a thrift store or something. I don't know where I got it. But I have it and I just started like I really did just start it. I am on page eight and look my friend Amanda she painted this for me. Isn't it beautiful? There's my bookmark for Amy Poehler's book and yeah I'm on page eight but even on page eight I like it way better than I like this and they're both non-fiction okay so that's saying something that obviously she's a comedian so this is going to be more humorous and this is going to be more professional but you know what I'm sure I'll finish both I will I will this year um I also kind of started this book and then I put it pause initially I found it as an audiobook and I listened to about two hours of it and then I was like going through my little sister's library and I see that she has the physical copy of the audiobook I'm listening to so I told her I was like I'm gonna read it and she's like okay and this one I'm really in the beginning too I'm on page seven but it's like with the audiobook I kind of forgot everything that I've listened to but I find that if I read it at least I'll retain it and this is the kind of book you want to read over and over again because it's not something you're just going to start practicing all at one go. Like, I'm not going to go up to my mom and talk to her in 92 ways. It's definitely a book that I'm going to have to study and we'll see. How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. Okay, seriously. 
that was it. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. And I will see you. God knows when. It could be another three years. Look, my nails have really been grown out. You guys, I really have been quarantining in my room. I haven't left. I haven't got my nails done in weeks. <sighs>